there, savvy home buyers and sellers. This is Jeff O'Leary, the Village Guru, Miss Saga Real Estate Broker. And in today's episode, we're gonna go over surprises home sellers face when selling their home. If you're looking to sell in the near future, you're not gonna wanna miss this video. So without any further ado, let's get right into it. So you've decided to sell your house, congratulations. Today I'm gonna to talk about eight surprises home sellers you might face while selling your house that nobody really talks about. They're usually more petty annoyances. However, if you know about them ahead of time, you can prepare yourself and that way make the process go that much more smoother, get your home sold and get on with your life. So surprise number one, real estate agents will show up late. We preach that they need to show up during the time of their showing. And while I would say eight out of 10 of them do follow the schedule, you're always gonna run into people that show up too early, too late, and generally just don't know how to tell the time. I wish that we could make them follow the schedule, but unfortunately, I don't know what it is. Some people, they just can't follow a schedule. Surprise number two, buyer agents, will not provide feedback. Yes, I know every listing appointment, the agent's like, I'm gonna call everybody and I'm gonna get you feedback on your home. Guys, listen, maybe one out of 10 realtors will provide feedback and I'm gonna tell you why. Because as a buyer's agent, a lot of times you're showing six, seven, eight houses to your clients in a trip. Now, if you had to go back to your office and spend the next three hours calling up all these sellers to tell them that their house is overpriced, you can see how it gets a little tiring. Yes. I always call for feedback, I have my team call, but if the agent's unavailable, I mean, we do move on, so don't expect that you're gonna get feedback from everybody. Surprise number three, not everybody's gonna love your house. I know, you love it, you've put all the work into it, it looks awesome, but at the end of the day, every buyer is different and they're looking for different things. You may have this huge backyard and think, wow, man, people are gonna love it, and then we have a buyer that comes in and says, I don't have the time to mow that lawn. At the end of the day, you just gotta get more showings because the more showings you have, the greater chance of getting the offer and the higher the price. I usually say it takes about 10 showings to get an offer. Now that's not an exact science, but that usually how it works out. So if after about 10 showings, you're not getting any offers, then you can start to look at, okay, is there a price issue? We've kind of gone through enough people that, you know, we're gonna have someone from every type of uh, category. So at the end of the day, don't be surprised. Not everybody's gonna love your house, but then again, only one person can buy it. And that's the person you want to love it the most. Surprise number four, open houses are rarely gonna sell your house. I know. We love to do open houses as agents. It's great, it gets us exposure, we get to meet your neighbors, hopefully they sell their house too, and maybe the off-off chance an unrepresented buyer will come through and sell the house. It does happen. However, statistically speaking, 90% of buyers use their own realtor. Those realtors generally tend to book their own private appointments. So that's where you need to focus your energy on making the home look as good as possible, allowing the showings to happen because that's more than likely how your house is gonna get sold. Surprise number five, you may get verbal cash offers. Bob down the street might walk up to you and say, I wanna buy this house, I'll give you a cash offer. Guys, these rarely, rarely, rarely ever go through. In fact, on every listing I get, somebody comes out of the woodwork that, you know, doesn't wanna actually write it on paper or, you know, get qualified for the house. They just like to talk and find out more information. Don't take anything seriously at all unless it's an offer on paper and preferably there's a check behind it. Surprise number six, not everybody's gonna offer you your asking price. And that's okay, people. I know in this day and age, a lot of sellers get offended when they don't receive the asking price that they're asking for. And in fact, a lot of listing agents actually get all worked up because you're not offering them their actual asking price. The buyers are able to offer you whatever they wanna offer you. And at the same time, you don't have to accept that offer and that's the way you need to play it. When we're talking about negotiations, the people who get emotional are usually the ones who end up losing in the negotiation. I love getting offers, even if they're lowball, even if my client's not gonna accept it, you know why? Because that starts action. When an offer comes in, then other buyers see that offer, they tend to speed up their actions, and then in turn, they offer. So never say no to an offer. I see too many listing agents going, don't even bother if it's not asking price. Like, listen, they have to present offers, and as a seller, you don't have to accept it. 
And just be grateful if you're starting to get offers, whether they're your price or not, that means things are going in the right direction. So don't surprise number seven. If you've neglected your house while you've owned it and not made the repairs, don't be surprised if on the home inspection, they pop up and it might cause problems later. Buyers nowadays are looking for turnkey properties. So make sure to do those repairs ahead of time. It'll save you stress because during that time where you're sold conditionally, a lot can happen and you want it to go smooth and get the deal done. Cause finally surprise number eight, selling your home can be stressful, especially if you have pets or children. That's scheduling showings, people showing up late, agents leaving lights on, people walking in with their shoes, leaving your doors open. It happens. Best way to combat this is number one, if you are in a position where you can't have late showings because of little ones or you have a pet, then schedule times ahead of time and put it on the MLS. That way the buyer agents, they can see when they can show the home and they can plan accordingly. Also, you might want to get out of your home on the first weekend or two weekends, maybe go to the in-laws, stay a day, because more than likely the action will happen right away because buyers are out there waiting for new properties. And when a new home comes on the market, the first couple of weeks is the busiest. So plan on really flexing for that time. And hopefully if you're priced right and it's a good market and it's marketed properly, you'll get your home sold. Well, there you go. I hope you enjoyed my video on eight surprises home sellers face. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and share it with your friends. I'm Jeff O'Leary, the village guru and have yourself a great day.